previously on Brace the Badlands. This is Vic Daniel. Was this a gunhead I was speaking with? Sure is, Vicky baby. It's done. Uh, shot a bunch of gangers, got some info. Let me uh, let me get in contact with the client. They wanted to inspect the building themselves. Once the client is satisfied, please come back to the office. I'll uh, I should have some more work for you. Absolutely, pleasure doing business. I've just got two perps and cuffs, and I'll take them back to the station. Well, you both head off in your car, separate cars, um, respectively. Are you driving straight back to the uh, recycling office building, uh, Vic? Yes. It, it's a relatively quiet drive back. It's now sort of later in the evening, so you guys have left sort of early afternoon, sort of evening when you began. It's probably close to about midnight at the moment, so the roads are mostly quiet on your drive back. There's only the old sort of sort of you know car or two on the on the sort of drive through you know New Westbrook and, and Haywood on your drive. Now, Rama, you have a couple of options in terms of a couple of police departments that you can drop them off to. Were you just looking for the closest one? Um, yeah, the closest one. There's a police station up in the in the upper, upper marina, which you sort of have to drive through anyway. Mm -hmm. um, there's a couple of police um, stations that you can choose from. And I would assume as well, I know... So would I know where the car is from? Just which station it's from, actually. Yeah, from. The, the car has like a designation number on it, which indicates where it's like where the police uh, came from. Yep. So it's actually another department that's in the upper marina, um, like rebuilding zone. Okay. So you, you roughly know, um, you think, where the, the sort of the um, backup came from. Yep, I will drive there. Uh, all right, it takes you about five, ten minutes to drive through the city. So you're sticking more towards a, a lot of the rebuilding zones. It's a little bit busier. Mm -hmm. um, thankfully, there doesn't look to be any sort of gang violence or anything through much of these districts, so it's, it's still a fairly quiet drive. You manage to park up to what looks to be a police district that has a couple of NCPD signs lit up, um, and there's sort of like a loading, uh, sort of like a locked loading gate um, to the side um, that's sort of got like a little bit of a, like a speaker box to the side of it with a security camera pointing at you. Yeah, I just look at the camera. The speaker box that's near the gate sort of speaks up. It's like, uh, yeah, uh, who's, uh, who's in the car? Uh, this is Officer Rama. I am just dropping off two perps for booking. I don't believe you're, uh, part of this district, Officer Rama. What are you, uh, doing in the vehicle? Oh, well, called in a few cops, bit of backup to help out with a gunfight in the combat zone. Fortunately, one cop took a hit, been sent off to the nearest hospital left their car behind, so I thought I will just drive it back, drop it off. I see, well, uh, yeah, park them and uh, bring them in and we'll process them. Yeah. And the uh, security gate opens up and you're able to find a sort of a free parking spot um, where you can park the car. Once that happens, I will exit the vehicle, take out the two guys in cuffs and walk them into the station. The, the station is, is fairly sort of locked down, but as you walk towards the main door, you can hear sort of like a large sort of a click as the, uh, the large doors open up. Um, you see what seems to be a stationary sort of uh, police officer at sort of like a reception desk. That sort of was obviously the person that you spoke to. So, uh, what are we booking these two for? Attempted murder of an officer. Oh, jeez. Yeah, they probably would have been uh, better off dead. Yeah, I warned them. Fair enough. Well, yep. uh, chuck them into a holding cell three and we'll, uh, we'll process them. All right. You mind if I borrow just a vehicle for today? Return it back later? Mm, all right, but I'll need you to sign off this paperwork. All right. Any, um... He sort of slides a sort of a, um, like a digital um, sort of clipboard to you mm. and just is sort of like, it's just like um, sort of requesting like a signature on there, sort of a, sort of a sign off on it. Yep. So I'll drop the two guys into the holding cell, come back yep. um, and sign it off. Like cool. not too keen on walking out to the Badlands, so. Uh, don't, uh, I don't blame you. All right. All done. And then I push everything towards the clerk. Excellent. Thank you very much. Well, uh, yeah, we can bring it back tomorrow. That'd be great. Yep. I'll see you then. Wonderful. And you're able to uh, bring the car uh, back to the recycling stop as well. Your drive is, is probably a lot more quieter than Phoenix, mainly because you're in a police cruiser. Um, so everyone will obviously try and steer well clear of you on the drive back. And you all arrive and in, back into the recycling office. So, uh, now, as you arrive, you find that there's no one at the reception desk. Obviously, this is quite late at night. You find that the building looks to be sort of, I guess, unmanned at the moment. The, the door itself is, is sort of available if you wanted to sort of walk yourselves in. I give it a quick knock before entering. Um, no, no I don't. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm in. Hello? Uh, you see a light coming from like the back, uh, sort of back of the office. Um, obviously someone looks to be sort of at their desk from what you can tell. 
sort of from the far, far right of the office building. Uh, as you open the door, you see Victor Anyov working on a very large flat screen. He seems quite startled as you show up. He's like, oh, I wasn't expecting you to come back tonight, but uh, no, uh, fair enough, very well. Um, uh, give me just a moment um, and uh, please, please have a seat on the, uh, the board room. Should I've done this chair. Oh, I meant the boardroom outside, but no, that that's fine. Please, uh, please grab a few chairs. And he, uh, he, uh, yeah, it's fine. Just stands. He's <laughs> forced to address us. Uh, okay. Well, uh, let me uh, let me turn my monitor around. So he brings uh, from his desk. He turns his quite big sort of flat screen around. I crane my head to get a glimpse of what he's working on as he does it. Um, you can see what looks to be like a few sort of. Quickly, just having a quick glance, it looks to be what looks a bit maybe like a project proposal, um, but you're not able to see enough information to guess who that could be with. Now, the, the client uh, has already contacted me in regards to the job that you completed, and they're, they're very satisfied with the work. Obviously, uh, I will uh, have to send the payment to you, um, to your associated accounts, um, first thing in the morning. Now, I wanted to see whether or not I might be able to send you a proposal for a, a more significant job. Obviously, uh, this would require some hazard pay because it is out in the Badlands and it might be a, a, a long job, but uh, I can promise that we would pay well. I mean, yeah, sure, yeah. Easy. Well, so long as you're paying that job. It's a job. <laughs> Excellent. Job is a job. The only thing would be that if you have any commitments in Night City, you may need to clear them up first before you, uh, before you leave. Well, I'm fine for that. I'm ready to leave in the morning. Wonderful. Well, uh, let me just bring up a, a map. Um, he taps away on his keyboard for a moment and brings up a, a map of what you can see is sort of the, the current sort of uh, districts of, of the state of California. Now, obviously you know where Night City is um, in between um, the great states of Northern and Southern California. We have a, an associate uh, named Evan Briggs that uh, has requested our assistance with, uh, with uh, rec some reclamation work for a town um, in Southern California called Bakersfield. He would like to meet a team that could assist with the reclamation efforts, and, but he'd like to meet with you in person um, in the, the city of State Line, um, which is a little bit uh, east out of Night City. If I could give you uh, a few days to sort out any affairs that you had, um, I'd like you to meet him in, uh, in State Line in, in two days' time. All right, will do. Yeah. Wonderful. I'll um, I'll send the rest of the details to your comps. Looking forward to it. Excellent. Well, please, uh, please don't let me keep you. I need very, very sort of aggressively sort of gestures for you all to uh, look, out of the, <laughs> look out of the office, Alpha's building. Uh, I'll make sure that the payments are sent to you as soon as possible. And uh, uh, yes, I'd request that you uh, get in contact with Evan Briggs in about two days' time in the, the city of Salem. Cool. Um, I'm gonna slap him on the shoulder as I walk out and go. Nice working with you, Vic. <laughs> Don't ever touch me again. <laughs> uh, it is now well past midnight in the city of Night City. I'm guessing all of you have, I think, just about all of you live in your little container shacks. Yeah, they're about mostly much. Polish, except for Rama. <laughs> oh, I do live in a container. Oh, there you go. I thought someone had it. Oh, I was uh, going to play a corpo, but... Uh, uh, you receive shortly thereafter, as you leave the building, a little bit more information on your agents. So the contact is a uh, former highway patrol officer named Evan Briggs, who is essentially requesting the assistance of a couple of reclamation teams to assist with um, some work out of Bar uh, Bakersfield. Uh, he says that he'd provide some more information in person once you meet. So this would be in two days' time. So you guys have two days to get any affairs that you have in order, you know, any jobs or any contacts or family members or any equipment that you need to buy before he uh, before you need to be there. So I guess from a player perspective, did you guys have anything that you wanted to do? Obviously, this is quite late at night, so if you wanted to hit up the night market to buy anything, this would be an ample opportunity to do so. Yeah, I think I might do that. I'm going to do that. Yeah, and I'm going to organize with my nomad family uh, to replace my vehicle. All right, well, what I will do is there's always a night market in Night City, so it doesn't take you guys too long to, to find one. Too bad he didn't give the payment then and there. Well, as you travel to the night market, I'd say that the payment eventually comes through. It uh, takes you a little while, but you find a, a night market that's set up in a sort of a, a parking lot uh, behind a, a restaurant. Very you cool. see a couple of different people have set themselves up in sort of little vans and little tables that they've, um, they've sort of set up. But if there's anything that you need to find, you can uh, definitely find it here. Gunhead, you're actually familiar with a, a net runner contact um, that actually lives nearby. He's named Echo. He actually has a sort of a, basically a little basement. You've actually gone through him a couple of times for some hardware upgrades for your cyber gear. So in the event that you want any sort of cyber gear, you can uh, you can obviously touch base with him. That's exactly what I want. 
actually. Let's see. Yeah. They probably said you may want to touch base with him first before you rock up, but... <laughs> right. I'm going to call him? Uh, yeah, you can call him or text him, whatever you... What a gunhead would do, I guess. Um, you know what? Uh, gunhead would probably text him. Um, so, uh, can you tell me his name again? Sorry, I missed it. Uh, this is Echo. Echo, uh, that's your contact. Echo the dolphin. All right, let me let me text him. Because I have a bit of a debt to pay off, I don't really buy anything. Mm-hmm. So I'm just standing around, just on my um, phone, just um, in contact with my job, making mm-hmm. sure they know that I'm not going to be in the city yep. to take on any work. Sure. Yeah, like you put in a, like a leave request, I guess, sort of sort of thing. Yeah. Yep. And who would I talk to to get my shield sort of repaired? You could probably talk to someone in the night market. They're very resourceful sort of here, so you'd be able to find someone that can sort of sort, sort of, yeah. You see a weapons dealer is, is nearby. They've got a couple of things in a truck, um, so you can have a chat with them. Yeah, and I'm reserving the cybernetics for my brother. Ah, uh, okay. So you're shop. just going to hold on to that for the time being? Yeah. Uh, Echo responds to you, Gunhead, and says, uh, yeah, yeah, feel free to drop in. Cool. Uh, as you walk down the stairs, you see a large man with a southern ally who's sort of sitting away at a big uh, sort of computer desk. He's like, um, Gunhead Baby, what's going on? <laughs> Can I do the uh, dealer, you son of a bitch? <laughs> 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 Except there's no muscles involved. It's just really skinny hacker arms. Oh, and Echo's large arm. Mm. How you doing, man? Uh, not too bad. Yourself? Oh, yeah. Great. Now, what can I do for you? Uh, yo, I'm after, um, upgrades, man. Upgrades. What do you got? You've come to the right place. He, uh, pushes back on his sort of roller chair to a sort of a series of sort of, um, like cupboards that he has just next to the desk. Yep. And shows you his wares. His wares, which I'm currently finding in the Cyberpunk Red Core book. Please feel free to do that, and I'll come back to you once you've found some stuff that you wanted to buy. Now, Michelle, I'll just see if you wanted to get your humble, uh, so your shield. Sort of, yep. Yeah. I'd say to repair the existing one, it would it be does. a little bit cheaper, but it would just take a little bit of time to do. Yeah. Uh, so yes, this is a sort of a, an older Asian woman that's got a couple of um, sets of, um, sort of equipment set up. Um, she looks at it and she says, give me one day, um, 80 EB, I can repair it. Yeah, no worries. Yep. That'd be great. Thank you. And I come up and go, I'd like to do the same. Mm, uh, 80 EB. Yep. How much did we get from the job if the money came through? Uh, you each got 500 euro bucks. 500, all right. Well, I'm considering a drum magazine. Uh, you hear a gentleman that sort of has a sort of a series of weapons set up. Well, I can help you out with that. Oh, good. He tries to wave you, uh, wave you down. Yep, I move over to him. And uh, what can I help you find? Ooh, considering a drum magazine, but I'm not sure whether that would fit into my hidden holster. Ooh, yeah, that would, uh, that would definitely get a bit... Uh, yeah, a little bit large, that's for sure. Yeah. Reckon an extended magazine will fit? I reckon you could find a way. Alright. I'll get an extended magazine for my pistol right here. Excellent. Yep. And I'd like to purchase a hundred basic ammunition. Let me get that, uh, prepared for you. I'll also grab a hundred basic ammo. I think that's two hundred in total. Two hundred in total. Uh, yep. 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 And I'm just yep. gonna look at grenades. Sure. And while you're doing that, are we going to get VC? I was gonna get. I was also gonna get a hundred uh, ammo. Yep, so I'll be hundred euro bucks. Yep, and maybe two flashbangs. Excellent. So that's three hundred euro bucks. I'm uh give VC a call and say, hey VC, while you if you see any ammo kicking about, can you buy some for me. And I'll hit you up later. What do you need? Oh, I reckon about a hundred basic ammunition, please. Make that two hundred basic ammo. Done. He uh, he digs into the back of his big white truck and finds the flashbangs, and he uh, chucks chucks them over to the table too. All right. Pleasure doing business with you. Cheers. How much money did we get from the job? Uh, five hundred EB. Cool. Let's see grenades, grenades, incendiary animation. Hmm. Never know it could come in handy. And Fennec, were you sticking by your vehicle? Uh, at the moment, I'm also just having a scroll through the uh, lists of stuff. Excellent. And I am paying off some of the debt I have. Oh, yeah? Okay. By phone, yeah, because sure. I'm minus 500. Oh, yes. So I'm How putting 420 pay? towards that okay. from what I got paid, and then 80 is for that shield to be repaired. Oh, so you're paying, like, the 420 from all, all to your debt? Yeah. Okay, sure. So I'll just be 80 odd dollars yeah. off. You're able to do that through your agent. You get a little, like, little ping off this little app that, that you have with your... your um, your debitor, 
Debitor? Is that the one? Mm-hmm. I guess so, yeah. Um, with Debitor, and they say, payment received, with a little smiley face. Yeah. You still have 80 EB going. Yeah. And like, just like with a very fine full stop. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. I'll buy two tear gas grenades. So that's an additional 100. I like his style, he says. Yep. And since I have that extra assault rifle, I will sell that. Uh, Militech brand. This is, uh, this is nice. Yeah, there's. Fell off the uh, back of the truck? Uh, off some guy. Ah. That's the way. Uh, look, it looks like this is partially new, uh, used, but uh, I'll tell you what, I'll give you 200 EB for it. 200 EB? That's a deal. Oh, yeah, takes it off your hands. I need to check what cyberdeck I get by default. Do you mean with how many slots you have? Yeah. Do you remember? Uh, Netrunner gets a, a cyberdeck with seven slots. Um, and I just had a question about Black Ice. Um, if I was to initiate some Black Ice, when it gets destroyed, I keep the program, don't I? And I can make it again. I think, uh, yeah, as long as you have the, the, the software, I think it's still valid. You just, it gets potentially just gets derezzed. Um, which then just means, I guess, that you have to reload it once you have it. Because the program's a program, I guess. So. Yeah, true. Cool beans. Um, what sort of uh, black ice were you thinking? Of? I was thinking about the. Uh, just thinking about uh, getting a hellhound, because um, that's awesome. But at the same time. Ah, the hellhound, he says. And then he brings up on a little digital display. Like a little <laughs> spinning hologram of a dog. A little spinning hologram of a three headed uh, uh, hound. Oh, that's so sick. Um, what have I already got? Uh, well, gone ahead with sorting this, was anyone else purchasing anything? No, I think I'm good with what I have so far. Nothing that's available from the night market, because I have to go elsewhere for cyberware. Oh, sorry, yeah, you can get cyberware here, I just didn't have a person Okay, yet. yep. That is fine. Yeah, were you after anything particular? Looking to get a cyber eye. Did you not have one at all? No, I didn't have a cyber eye. I barely have any cybernetics um, oh, wow. that really change my body apart from the hidden holster and a subdermal pocket. Um, the, the gentleman um, who, had, who has an assortment of food, but he also deals in cyberware, um, says that he could sell you the parts, but you'd have to find a, an actual Ripperdock to install the, uh, install the kit. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, if you need Ripperdock, my brother can help you out. Oh, that'd be lovely. I'd like to get a cyber eye. Kiroshi, if possible. Uh, it's always the best. Yep. And I like to get an anti-dazzle module. Yeah, he brings out sort of a nice little um, uh, like a felt case um, with a cyber eye as well as the sort of, uh, sort of uh, pending attachments to it. Um, all right. Cyber eye as well as the anti-dazzle feature. That'd be uh, 200 EB. 200 EB. Here you go. Transferring. Excellent. He's uh, Agent Ping, so he receives money. Yeah, take care. I'd, uh, I'd get that installed as soon as possible, just so it doesn't go bad. Oh, sure. I'll just talk to my friend over here. So, Rez, um, yeah. when does your brother sort of operate? Oh, 24-7. 24-7. Working hard to earn our own business, so yeah. we work whenever we can. Just could head over there after this. Yeah, yeah. Can give you a lift. Other than Gunhead, was everyone done with their purchases for the time being? Uh, yes, I'm, uh, I'm just double checking my tech ability to see if there's anything I need to grab for it. Yeah, take the time. Uh, don't forget that you do have your maker ability as well. So yeah, that's what that's what I mean. That's what I'm looking at, seeing what uh, what sort of stuff I can do with that. Uh, Echo, <clears throat> we're friends, aren't we? Uh, well, as long as you got the the cred. Ah, uh, I got the cred, but. You know, I was just wondering if you can find it in your heart. Just a tiny discount. What are you trying to get? Look, I'm really after a hellhound, but I'm also really after some super glue. It's only, you know, I got... Wait, let me check my wallet. <laughs> Did I start this game with any money? Uh, I think it would start about with at least 500 euro bucks. Only yeah, I started out with 500. I did not spend any of it. I got scratch that thought. You don't need to find anything in your hut. You said more of those fucking synth well, burgers. You weren't gonna find anything anyway. Oh, no. All right. Uh, what weapon quality were we given? Sorry to break you there. On that. All good. Are all our weapons like average quality? I'd say probably just average, unless specified otherwise. All right. Well, I might upgrade my shotgun to excellent quality. 
Is that using your maker ability? Yes. To do that? Uh, upgrade right. expertise. All right. All right. Let me just sort of go ahead and we'll get that process. No worries. Go ahead. Actually, um, I just read so the anti dazzle thing requires two cyber rays, so I might as well get another cyber ray. <laughs> Why not? Yep. Well, look what I prepared earlier. And he brings out a little felt box. <laughs> <laughs> I know you'd be back. 16 <laughs> humanity loss. It has like 70 of them just underneath. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure you get matching colors. Yep, so I'll deduct another 100. Uh, Alright, so you were getting Gunhead, a Hellhound, and then was it something else? Uh, yeah, no, uh, look. I found it in my infinite wealth to uh, treat you to a couple more uh, burgers on your next day out, Echo. Um, we got we got a Hellhound. We got some super glue. We got a backup drive. And uh, I'm fairly sure we have a crash barrier as well. The uh, Echo types away on his computer. Um, quite aggressively, and uh, you see on a sort of like a little um, removable device, he uh, he sort of prepares the programs. He then passes to you like, yeah, this should do it for you. Um, plug this into your deck, and you should be good to go. So easy. All right, cheers, my man. Pleasure doing business. Anytime, my friend. And yeah, then spend it all in one place. Uh, all right, so it was. Uh, you already done the pricing for the extra I did you wrong? Yes, and calculate my new empathy. We'll, uh, for we'll later. Remove that completely once we do the actual install. Yep, actually quite scary losing humanity. Yeah, you don't want to go. Uh, don't want to go psycho. Yeah. All right, so I'll just confirm from your PC. So you are upgrading from an average quality weapon to ex excellent quality. Yep. So it looks like I'm upgrading. Five hundred EB, expensive. Hmm. I actually don't know if I can afford the weapons cost right now. Um, I'm looking at the. Yeah, you can always. Save yeah. For later if you need to, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'll hold off on that. When does the um, rent come out of our costing? Uh, end of the month. So that's okay. you still guys have about probably about thirty days before that. So yeah, yeah. Okay. So we'll just say they started from the start of the month. Yep. Sweet. I'll need that time. <laughs> uh, okay. So you weren't going to buy anything at this stage? No, I'm. I'm good. Okay. I purchased what I need to. Can I just quickly ask how much ammo is? It's 10 EB for 10 units of ammo. Yeah, so effectively 100 bucks gives you 100 rounds effectively of ammo. I guess you could think of it like, yeah. Awesome. Um, I might buy 50, 50, 50 rounds for my thingy, which would be a total of 20. Wait, how much EB for 10 rounds? Uh, so it'd be 10 EB for 10 rounds. 10 EB, so yeah. 50 EB for 50, yeah. Uh, now, uh, Fennec, I, I want to get an understanding from your family. Um, I know that they're air nomads, um, so I, I know that they still have a bit of a pool of ground vehicles. Would you say that you have any family members that operate in the city? Yeah, we're one of the larger uh, nomad groups, so there's uh, definitely people in the city. When were you going to make the call to get the car replaced? Uh, I'll call them now and start the process. I'll just have to drop off my current one or drive it to where the new one is and pick it up. Sure. Um, if you want to do that and then roll a 1d10 for me. Um, Alright, with an 8, I'm going to say that you actually have a family member nearby. And they can drop off they can drop off a replacement vehicle for you pretty quickly. Alright, uh, well, I'll, I'll uh, give him a call. Hey, Jimmy. Jimmy. Uh, Fennec here. Need a long-range vehicle. Fennec, cousin, how you doing? Good, mate. Uh, bad news, but I lost the back window. Uh, she'll be right there. Again? Happens all the time. Oh, jeez. Uh, let me know where to meet you, and I'll swing around. Well, I'm doing some uh, biz in the city myself. Do you want me to drop it off to you? Yeah, yeah, I'm over in the night market. Uh, no worries. All right, give me, uh, give me a little while. Cheers. See you soon, cuz. Appreciate. While you guys are completing the, the rest of your transactions, um, uh, your cuz um, shows up with a replacement vehicle for you and, and pulls up outside of the, uh, the night market. Was this the one you wanted? He, uh, he shouts to you outside of... Uh, Outside of the car. Beautiful. Beautiful. Jimmy, mate. I owe you one. Anytime, cuz. He, uh, he takes the um, damaged vehicle off your hands uh, and then drives away uh, into the sea. Uh, Alright, I think the last outstanding item was for Rama to get his eye implants installed. Now, uh, Res, your brother. Yeah. What is your brother's name? Rick. Rick. 
Ricky. Ricky. So like short for Ricardo. Oh, I love it. Okay. Yeah. We're an Italian sort of family. Yeah. Uh, now, where does Rick live? Uh, so we live in the same sort of uh, shipping container. Yep. And he has his uh, office space out of there? Yeah. Okay. Share the rent. And have you already been in touch with him about bringing Rama in for the install? Yeah, I shot him a text message. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Uh, he's responded and says that he can do it. Yeah. Hey, uh, Rama. Yeah. Uh, my brother can do your cybernetic eyes and installations for you tonight if you wish. Oh, great. Yeah, I'd rather get them on tonight. It gives me time to heal up, get used to the new interface. No worries. I'll um, take you to him and All right. get those installed. It's following me back to the car. Uh, now, was there anything you guys need to do left in the night market or are you guys happy to leave? I'm good to leave. With the purchases? Yeah. yeah. From the night markets, it's actually a fairly quick drive to the container hub set up uh, where both uh, Rez and Rick live. Um, and you both pull up both of your vehicles, both the, the new uh, the new sort of grand vehicle that Fennec has, as well as the, the currently loaned police car. Uh, as you arrive, you hear sort of, uh, sort of a bit of sort of like whirring and stuff, I suppose, from, from the container as well. There's some like large sort of lights stemming from the bottom of the container shed. Um, now, what does Rick sound like? Just like Get the character in places. Oh, just like the big affectionate sort of brother. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah excellent. Quite tall and like burly, but he's just a big soft teddy sort of character. I don't know. Sure, yeah. okay. Um, all right, well, you pull up to the, the container shed and you know, the, the doors at the moment are closed, but you can hear there's obviously lights coming on from inside. Yeah, I give it a quick wrap and then just open the door. Sure. Rick, hey. Res. I'm home. Oh. And now, uh, who are your friends? Oh, so these are my new colleagues. We did some reclamation work today in uh, Night City, the bad, the Badlands. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah, it was pretty full on. <laughs> she did a very good job today. Oh, thanks. <laughs> oh, that's my that's my sis. Yeah, I got some I got some souvenirs for you too, bro. Oh, let's check it out. And yeah. I hand you like all the stuff I got: uh, the internal agent, the memory chip, the vampires, the paint, the damaged paint editor, the scrambler, de scrambler, and the cybernetic arm. And I hand it over. This is going to keep me busy. Yeah, I thought you could make use of these. Mm. For some more clients. I'll play around with it. Thanks, yeah. sis. Yeah, hey, um, my friend here, he needs some cybernetic eyes. Oh, stuff. yeah, you mentioned on the message. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, could you help him out? Yeah, all right, come on, pal, yep. come into the hot seat. All right, got them he right here. You to a, yeah, he directs you to a, sort of a, a long, sort of prone medical chair mm -hmm. um, and, and grabs the, the two um, Kuroji eye implants um, off of you. Now, uh, uh, this is, uh, would this be your, your first? Cybernetic install that you've done? Pretty much. I've got some basic cybernetics, but this is my first major one. All right, let me uh, let me just give you a bit of a dose of morphine. Uh, otherwise, this is going to sting a bit. The, the rest of you, are, I, I don't think we have enough chairs here, but um, please grab a seat up here. There's a, there's a bed also in as well. He sort of directs the rest of you that are sort of standing outside to, to sit in. I imagine this like a really beat up sort of leather lounge mm -hmm. in there or something. Yeah. Just yeah, scrounge on the street. Yeah, yeah just a cozy sort of. Shoddy looking place. <laughs> this is very awkward. Everyone watching me get my yeah. You guys all yeah. Just stand around. <laughs> oh, yeah, does, is there any paperwork involved with this, like waivers or anything, like with cybernetic installations? <laughs> no, I'm not yeah. talking in person, oh, but yeah. like I'm just wondering. Does he just a like... lot of this stuff is is off the books? So yeah, no, right. It's, okay. uh, it's it's very much it's very much a sort of grey market sort of thing. Like yeah, you know, no one talks about it. No one talks about it. Yeah. I mean, if you wanted to go legit then sure, there's paperwork, all sorts of stuff and insurance, but this is very much a case of, you know, just got to trust the people you're working with. Yeah, I yep. Yeah. Uh, I scrounge around the kitchen for some first aid and just continue patching myself up. Yep, excellent. Um, now, what were the rest of you doing while Ronald was in the chair? We just guys look, sort of looking around. Um, does anyone potentially, would any of you have homes in the same sort of container shack? There's, there's quite a few about around the city, um, but um, what were the rest of you doing at the moment? I don't know, actually. I'm not sure where I would be located um, relative to where we are now. The uh, the container hub that they're in is, is just a little bit south of, of where you guys were in the night market. So this is all in the Haywood uh, or Santo Domingo areas. Yep. Um, so for a few guys wanted to think about where you are. Um, there's, there's quite, you know, there's, there's hundreds of little containers sort of set up all throughout the city. So, um, yeah, that, that's fine. Mm. All right, well, while this is happening, um, Rama, you're um, injected with a dose of morphine um, just near the temple. 
um, and you, you quite quickly find that um, your, your vision starts to blur a little bit and you feel sort of a little bit sort of weaker and you sort of slump into the chair a little bit. Mm-hmm. Now, um, because this is your first sort of real subnickel implant, um, you obviously, I, I don't think I need to say it, but uh, it's going to take a little while to adjust, so try and, try and take it easy for a couple of days. Um, but you should adjust to these uh, um, and should be right as rain. All right. He pulls out a variety of little equipment um, and, and sort of uh, what looks to be, I guess you could call like a, an extractor tool. And he says, um, now, uh, because you haven't lost the eye, I'm going to have to take it out. Yes. All right. Well, uh, do you want me to start with left or right? You pick. Let's, uh, let's flip a coin. He, uh, he grabs a coin out of his pocket and uh, gives it a flip and throws it towards Rez. I catch it out of there. Mm-hmm. It's heads. Oh, all right. Ooh, bef- start with the right. Before you do that, <laughs> let me remove my contacts. So I'm wearing like red contacts, basically. So I just remove both of them. Uh, now I hope these are. I hope these contacts are transferable to uh, to cybernetical eyes. I'm assuming they would be. Oh, they what should are... be able to. Yeah. Excellent. All right. That's good. All right. With the uh, with the optics, uh, so the um, things removed, he uh, he then prepares the extractor and places it over your right eye. All right. Uh, you might want to hold your breath. Um, but not for too long. Not for too long. <laughs> um, and a, what sounds to be almost like a sort of a drilling sort of noise starts to, starts up, and you hear essentially a plop, and you lose partial eyesight out of one of your eyes. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> ah. You then hear You're the gonna extractor. You're going to love those first reactions, Rick, okay? <laughs> you then hear the extractor um, sort of whirring back again as it um, sounds like it's pulling the eye out. And the rest of you that are watching sort of from uh, from the container shed, you just see a, a human eyeball as well as the sort of the uh, sort of the long part of it from the back just sort of pops out as disconnects. Um, he then places it in like a little sterile um, little jar that he had to the neck, like to the to the um, side of him. All right, can you uh, can you pass me the uh, Kuroshi eye? Yeah. He says to you. Yeah. Yeah, I'll pass it over. Excellent. He then um, he grabs a, another tool that looks very similar to the extractor. Um, and then places it um, into the into the tool, and then places it again quite close to your right eye, and then starts it up, and then, uh, it then sort of begins the installation process. It, it takes about a minute for it to be completed. He says, "All right, well the uh, the eyes installed. I've just got to connect it up to your uh, to the rest of your uh, optics and your agent. Give me just a minute. We'll get your first eye online." He sort of pushes each chair back to a little bit of a sort of a, a work desk, um, and sort of starts typing away a little bit. All right, that should just about. Oh. Um, cool. You then find from um, your right eye, um, it starts to boot up. You can sort of see that there's a, like a sort of a little bit of like, thank you for choosing uh, Kuroshi Cyber Optics. Your choice in, um, you know, I Cybernetics. It then takes a few minutes while it does a few sort of quick diagnostics, but you're able to start seeing sort of a little bit like almost like a blurred view, but you can sort of start to see out of the eye. Um, all right, you ready to go for the left one? Go for it. Excellent. Pass me that extractor again. <laughs> he sets it up in your left eye, and the process essentially repeats. The uh, the original um, meat eye is extracted, places it in a sterile jar, um, grabs the the next Kuroshi optic, installs it in your left eye, and then uh, connects it back up to the uh, to the system. Um, after a few minutes, again, um, the Kuroshi eye starts to boot up, and um, from both your eyes, it's a little bit blurred, but you're able to now see through uh, through the cyber optics pretty uh, pretty clearly. Now it looks like the eyes are done. The only thing left is that accessory. Might as well get that installed now for you while we're here. And he uh, grabs the uh, oh, sorry, he grabs the anti dazzle uh, implants. Um, all right, this should be fairly straightforward. This just goes onto the uh, sort of the uh, cortical front part of the eye, so that should be fairly simple. He sort of grabs your head a little bit and and sort of um. Does a quick installation with another little, little quick tool, uh, which then goes onto the uh, to the top of the uh, the two eyes. Uh, all right, that should uh, that should just about do it. Thank how you. Does it, how does it feel? Feels good. Uh, like I said, it'll uh, take you a couple of days to get used to it, but uh, yeah, just take it easy, and you should be right. Yeah. Have you got a torch or something that we can just test out the the new? Module. Yeah, I think we should do. Can you pass me the, the torch, Rez? I uh, rustle around in the upper cupboards and I pull one out. Excellent. All right, let's uh, let's give this a go. Yep. He uh, turns the light on and, and flicks it straight towards your eyes. Yep. 
and I just see right through it. I don't get blinded at all. Yeah, you have no reaction to it at all. As far as you're concerned, the eye essentially filters out the brightness of the of the light, and you're uh, you're not affected by it at all. By it at all. Oh, that is trippy. It's uh, some pretty crazy tech, that's for sure. Yes. Well, um, if any of you uh, either need anything uh, installed, please uh, please give me a shout. Oh, will do. Uh, do you recommend me driving back now, or maybe just? chilling here Ooh, for the night i'd probably get someone else to drive you back or yeah maybe you can crash in our couch yeah i might crash here for the night uh, we pass through to the morning of night city um for it's another fresh day so again if there's anybody anything anybody wants to do such as you know um, quit your job or you know, hand in your notice or anything like that before you do leave town, you can arrange that. Oh, yeah. I think I did that the night before. Yes, yeah. you sent a message to your employer yeah. um, trying to take in some some leave time, <laughs> <laughs> Un, unpaid leave, so yeah, let's process. Well, I work for myself, so... Yeah, I think you're, you're pretty much covered as well as, I guess, Fennec with your Nomad Clan, you don't really have a sort of a nine-to-five job. Mm. Uh, and Gunhead, are you sort of, you're, you're a bit of a, a loner, I guess, you don't really have a employment? Yeah, no, as my character sheet says, I'm more of a, you know, odd jobs, hacktivist sort of, you know. Uh, now, with Rama, uh, with your occupation, uh, would you mm -hmm. be able to get some uh, time off easily, would you say? Yeah, I'm because I'm currently just off duty, so. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yeah. No worries. All right. uh, well, yeah, if there's nothing else anybody needs to do uh, for now, I will continue possible in this through the rest of the day. Uh, until we get to uh, another sort of uh, night period, another night market pops up in town um, in the same sort of similar, some, similar sort of you know sort of shady part of town. Um, you recognise a few of the same faces that you coordinated with earlier to get your repairs done. Um, one of the uh, vendors you recognise um, sees you, and you see that they have their bulletproof vest behind them. Oh, sorry, the bulletproof shield behind them, um, and they say, "Ah, oh, you pick up." Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Um, and they bend up, then grabs both the uh, bulletproof shield for Res and for Rama and hands them to you um, and, uh, and wishes you well. Thanks. Thank you very much. Um, so it's another night, I guess you could say, Night City. So it's entirely up to you guys whether you want to hit the road now or you want to stay another night in Night City and then hit the, hit the road early in the morning. Um, what, what, what's your preference? I mean, how long does it take to get there? Uh, about two to three hours to get the state line. Okay. And what time is it right now? It is late at night. Uh, well, probably best to go in the morning. If you're asking me, I would leave before the traffic starts in the morning. That's yeah, right. I'm on the road with like automated trucks. Yeah. You know, I don't want to get hit by that shit. I'm good to go. I'm ready to head off. Yeah. Also, someone to, somewhere to stay late at night <laughs> when we get there. <laughs> no. Oh, we've got a nomad with us. He'll know. Mm -hmm. He knows the roads. Okay. Let's head off. Yeah. Excellent. All right. Uh, okay. So you collectively all pop into uh, Phoenix, uh, mostly uh, mostly new sort of um, ground card that he has. So you guys recognise that he has the Inukan, uh symbol of the sort of the double um, double airport runways that are across it. Um, and you guys all uh, snugly, I guess mostly snugly, would you say fit in? Um, now, who would be going into the passenger seat of the vehicle? Question. Shotgun. <laughs> uh, excellent. All excuse right, me, so... but I literally have a shotgun. So excuse me, but I got a shotgun. Got... shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> Get into the boot. <laughs> uh, all right. So, uh, in the sort of the middle of twilight, um, you guys decide to hit the ground running uh, and, and fit into the uh, in, into the nomad car. Um, uh, you get a few, you get a few miles out of Night City, and you can sort of see the, the bit of the the glow and the sort of the red haze that sort of sort of exists throughout sort of um, Night City at the moment. You know, there's always a bit of a, sort of a haze and a bit of a fog sort of on the on the, the coast. Um, and uh, I'm going to say, skills. Can everyone roll a perception check for me in your character sheets? Sure thing. Okay. Two. Oh, ten. Sixteen. Wow. Um... I got a 10. I got 16. Rama and VC, uh, you guys are the only one uh, that are actively uh, paying attention on the road, other than Fennec, who's actually driving, um, that you notice there are a couple of lights coming from um, what looks to be um, 
potentially a vehicle um, that, that's sort of skirting probably a couple of hundred meters back on, on the highways that you guys are on at the moment. Oh, uh, guys, we're being tailed. Happen to life. I never learn. <laughs> <laughs> I crane my head to look back behind us and I assume, you know, they're far enough away that all I can see is the headlights in the night. For the time being, yes, um, that's correct. Uh, another about 10, 15 minutes pass and you find uh, there's a bit of a sound coming from um, coming from behind you, which sounds to be the sound of uh, motorbikes um, sort of roaring along. Pull over. I reckon we're going to have to deal with this. Uh, I do have a couple of sounds in my Hey, they could just be passing. Although I may have left my automated turrets on my other car. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'll say if this is a replacement while your main vehicle is getting repaired, this will not have the uh, auto fire weapon on the top of it. But it's still still a pretty beefy car, so it's still uh, still pretty good. Okay. Okay. What are you guys thinking? How would you like to go? Stopping is generally a bad idea in my experience. This is a good point. We need to deal with it regardless. Do you guys want to want me to check what I can see in cyberspace? Yeah. Sure. I ask the GM. So I don't have any net access points on this car. Does that mean I just can't react uh, with the motorbikes in any way? So if you can get close enough, um, um, a lot of electronics in Night City, anything that could, well, you can basically fit a net into a backpack if you really wanted to, but you know, some basic electronics. So anything that's a smart device, which a lot of vehicles that have sort of automated abilities are, um, uh, may have some sort of like a net access similar to the car that you connected to back in the medical building um, beforehand. You, you can usually access them if you can get close enough. Um, so from their distance, they're probably just without a range for you to actually try and connect to them. But if they got a little bit closer, you could potentially try and hook into them. Hi, Fennec. I can take a look. Uh, if you just slow down a bit, it doesn't have to look suspicious. I'll uh, slow down a little bit. Sure. Uh, okay, so uh, reacting to the slower speed, one of the uh, motorbikes uh, attempts to sort of overtake you on the road, while the other one sort of comes up behind, and you sort of get a bit of a uh, quick glimpse at one of the gangers as they pass you. Um, yeah, you see a ganger uh, clad in uh, sort of black apparel, um, what looks to be sort of like a very light sort of like um, light sort of chest armor um, that sort of eyes you as they as they pass, and they sort of um, continue past with. Uh, continue on this a little bit, you know, keeps keeps themselves sort of in, in your um, sort of top left corner of the car as you're sort of continuing along. The other gang is sort of uh, sort of um, keeping towards the other corner just behind you, but I would say that they're probably just close enough for you to attempt to try and uh, connect into the cars. Does it seem like they're um, top and tailing us on purpose? Uh, it's hard to say at this stage. If you wanted to make a check, you probably could if you wanted to give a go. As they go past, uh, I around the gang sign of the Aegis Nomad group, of which I'm part of. And if they recognize it, they should be uh, much more scared about me. <laughs> <laughs> and what, what does that gang stuff look like? Uh, it's like if you make the logo of the uh, Aegis but with your hands, good thing I'm plugged into the car to drive it, otherwise I can't do it. Fair enough. Makes sense. Uh, okay, so uh, from you, um, Gunhead, did you want to attempt to connect to the bikes, bikes net? Uh, yeah, I'd love to. All right, uh, give me a jack in uh, check from you, uh, Gunhead. Uh, I'm going to say for this, uh, let's say because the connection is waving in and out a little bit, I'm going to say it's a DB10. So, okay, cool. Thanks for doing Oh, okay. Um, the connection is tapering a little bit because the, the bike is sort of going back, back and forth a little bit, but you're able to establish just a little bit of a connection into the bike's net as you're sort of in the passenger seat, you bring down the virtu virtuality goggles and um, you sort of get a bit of a representation of the bike's sort of net itself. Sweet. So I figured out my gang sign, stick out your pinky in your thumb and then put your right hand uh, in front of your left hand uh, and it makes the like X shape of the logo of my Aegis Nomad clan. Thumb and pinky on both hands. Yeah, like the call across. me. Uh, Shaka's sign, <laughs> and then you put him hand in front of the other hand. Yeah. So the pinkies point downwards, thumbs point up, and all the other fingers are closed, hmm. and uh, makes an X. Yeah. Nice. It's very scary in person. <laughs> oh, I can imagine it would be for sure. All right. So I'm in the car's net. Uh, now, is there a, uh, are there any 
log files or anything I can go through here or? Uh, you immediately find uh, the level below you on the net is actually a password, uh, which is preventing you from accessing anything further, which makes sense. Most manufacturers would have that in place. Yeah. Uh, cool. All right. Let's just quickly run a uh, little old backdoor. Yep. I'll say DB8. Yeah, baby. I rolled a 10. All right, as you slide past that, you uh, find that this uh, motorbike system has uh, an actual um, program in it, uh, an ASP, um, oh, which notices you and attempts to attack. Um, oh. Now, given that there's a, I, I'm going to say that there's a, a form of combat, I'll take an issue from everyone um, as, as this sort of triggers the, the motorbike's sort of defense system. I rolled a nine. Lovely. I got a seven. I got a ten. Oh, hold on. Thirteen. Sorry. Got a seven. I rolled a sixteen. Uh, VC, uh, you may action first if you choose. So you're in the back seat of the car. Would that be right? Yep. I'm going to poke my head out and I'm going to take a shot at the guy tailing the uh, lower left corner of the car. Just before you do, um, my character's going to try for a free action and just be like, "Hey, shoot the one in the front. I got the one in the back," because um, that's the only guy I can interact with at the moment, and I might right. be able to control him to fucking crash his car his two-wheeled okay. car into a tree. Um, do we know what the range drop-off on shotguns is? Uh, 16 meters is probably still going to be okay. Um, to make 16 meters, you'd have to make a DV check of 20. 18. Uh, that is just shy of the 20 that you need. The uh, shotgun uh, pellets, oh, sorry, the shotgun slugs go flying. Um, they just miss the back of the bike, and you see the driver sort of wobbles the car a little. Uh, sorry, wobbles the bike a little bit uh, as the shots fly through. Clearly, quite disrupt. Now it comes to the uh, road ganger, uh, who uh, startled by the shot or uh, shotgun blast that just came out of the car, is going to pull out a pistol and is attempt, uh, attempting to shoot at you, VC, because you destroyed this brand. Uh, so from his distance to you, I think that's pretty close. Uh, he seems to be a pretty confident driver, so he's going to attempt to shoot his pistol at you directly. Oh, he rolls just shy of his DB. Um, he needed a 13, he rolls 12, um, which misses. So uh, you hear a very loud uh, um, pistol blast um, fire through, which just misses your head. Oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, he is going to attempt to swing behind the vehicle a little bit. Next, and it is Red. Uh, you're also in the back middle seat. Yeah. Yep. Do you want to take any actions? Uh, I look over to Rama and, and say, switch. Oh, I was going to lean out. Oh, okay. Just kick out the back windshield. Don't roll that. <laughs> I don't um, think Fennec would like that. <laughs> would, uh, what, what sort of Fennec, what, what sort of um, um, windshield or you know, what sort of protection would uh, most of your Nomad Clan's vehicles have? Uh, a lot of them do have the uh, armoured protection glass, but I don't think this one does. Glass uh, is moderately cheap, plexiglass. So if, uh, if it comes down to it, you can take the window out, but it's going to be a very uncomfortable drive home. I will attempt to kick the window out, I guess. <laughs> sure, give it a go. Uh, from you, I will take, uh, let's see, give me a athletics check. Oh, no, sorry. Um, hmm. no, yeah, give me a, give me a athletics check. No worries. While you're driving, I'm going to say it's a bit of a different one. Oh, I'm going to say 21. 21? Yeah. Oh, goodness. Rez is able to uh, quickly turn around in the vehicle and kicks out the back windshield, which comes flying off. Um, uh, the ganger has to quickly, at the last moment, sort of dodge out of the way to not run over it, I'm oh, sorry, not drive over it, um, but the uh, thing is now open and clear. Um, I'll say that that would have to be your movement for your turn, but yeah. it is now open. Can I sort of duck back down under the seat mm -hmm. and uh, get rid of my uh, shotgun? Yep, excellent. The uh, road ganger that is at the front uh, is also going to attempt to make a shot. This is towards the front of the vehicle now, uh, and they're going to attempt to shoot at uh, Fennec, who is driving the vehicle. Uh, so he's going to make a, an attack against you directly, Fennec. Uh, it's about eight meters, which is fine. So he's going to make a pistol shot against you, Fennec, from there, which is going to be a DB of 15. Uh, he's going to make a roll. Oh, uh, oh he's pretty cool with that. Uh, 24 to hit, which is going to hit. Um, now, what sort of <laughs> what sort of armor did you have on the car again? Uh, uh, not much. Uh, I'm going to say with that shot, he is going to probably land a few hits on the car itself. Um, just from the angle that he's shooting at, so that's going to come into the car directly. So, 
Uh, all right, so that's going to deal damage directly to the vehicle's uh, hit points. So let me just bring up the damage for that. Uh, they deal eight damage points directly to the vehicle, which I will keep a track of for you. All right, uh, Fennec, it is your turn directly. Yep, cool. I am going to turn on the brakes, tell everyone to uh, hold on tight for a sec. All right, everyone, I'm going to slow down here, hold on to something. <laughs> um, now, I'm going to say, uh, just for the fun of it, I'm going to probably say that I need to check from you just to make sure that you're able to break uh, successfully. Uh, yeah, I'm going to say, uh, give me a DV12 uh, control land vehicle check. Oh, all right, that's a critical one. Oh, that's, uh, that's not too good. Brace of Bad Lens is a Tales from Trantor actual play podcast using rules and settings from the Cyberpunk Red system by Al Torsorian Games. Intro and outro music is by Bradley Parsons, and background ambience is by Michael Gelfie. Find out more about our podcast series, including episode summaries, maps, and character details at talesfromtrantor.com. <laughs>